Hey. Today, how was the teacher? Ah, the teacher. Ah, the same person. Peru. No. Not much. Today. Oh, 20 people. Today. Ah, the class was from the beginning to the end. いたよ。ああ。うん。今日あのー、サウナ入った。ああ。ジャグジー。今日は閉まっちゃった。ああ、シャワーだけ。うん。ゾリ持ってかないとね、次は。下汚いから。床作っといたから
spoke to one of the co-founders about the campaign. Tina Deskovich of Moms for Liberty says we are struggling right now with the lowest reading score since the 1980s in America. So we really need to put the focus back on the basics and work with students to help them unleash their full potential. We are really excited to uh, have Ryan Walters, the state superintendent in Oklahoma. Uh, he put out a press release yesterday, I think, saying he declares that uh, this is also teach kids to read week for the whole state of Oklahoma. When it comes to low scores and other problems in education, some people and politicians push for more funding. But Deskovich says billions of dollars were spent last year on public education. Hashtag teach kids to read. Uh, we are doing it on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook right now. Uh, we've created some great graphics that you can share with statistics uh, about uh, all types of things that are happening in public education that are kind of fun to share. Find one that uh, you could relate to and that uh, you want to share. And please, please put it out and use the hashtag teach kids to read. I'm Chris Woodward. There are new numbers regarding wages and job growth around the country. Job growth by private employers slumped and was much weaker than expected in September. Payroll processing company ADP is reporting 89,000 new private sector jobs created last month. Economists were predicting nearly twice that number. Wage increases appear to be moderating. September pay was up 5.9% from a year ago. ADP says it has been seeing a steady decline in wages in the past 12 months. The monthly employment report is released on Friday. Jenny Cosola, Fox News. More news online at AFN.net and the AFN mobile. I'm Hi, I'm Matt Ayers, president of Wesley Biblical Seminary. Do you want to be prepared for ministry at an institution that you can trust? Wesley Biblical Seminary has been training trusted leaders for faithful churches for almost 50 years. In a nation where many denominations and theological institutions are caving to cultural pressure, Wesley Biblical Seminary is standing strong on God's truth. Earn your bachelor's or master's degree to equip you for faithful and fruitful ministry. Learn more at wbs.edu. Inform. Religious freedom is about people of faith being able to live out their faith, live out their convictions, no matter where they are. We quit. Sacred honor is the courage to speak truth, to live out your free speech. We also rejoice in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance. to really highlight here is the 
the place of man, right? Uh, verse 3, you return man to dust and say return of children of man. So man is is but of dust. Uh, that's what Genesis says. It says that he formed us from the ground. And uh, that's a place of humility. And it's not a place of insignificance because, after all, we are created in the image of God. So that is very important. But from a from a, 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 a playing field standpoint, we are we are not uh, all knowing. We are not all powerful. We are not God. God created us in His image, and so we need to remain in that place of humility. And Psalm chapter ninety really brings us to that place. And uh, anytime you begin to get a chip on your shoulder or think you've got it all figured out in this life, um, and I know uh, many of us probably don't struggle with that, but verse 3, go there in Psalm chapter 90 and remember where we are formed out of, and that is dust. So that's your note for humility <laughs> on uh, a note for humbleness on this day, Psalm chapter 90, verses 1 through 4. Well, uh, we are having our AFA retreat in April, April 3 through 6, so I want to remind you about, about that. April 3 through 6, we're going to be over in Sylacauga, Alabama, Alabama at Purcell Farms. If you're interested in the retreat, the AFA retreat, we would love for you to join us in April, April 3rd through the 6th. You can go to afaretreat.net and find out more afaretreat.net and find out more. I'll be there. My dad, Tim, will be there. Ed Vitagliano, Ray Pritchard, Jenna Ellis, Rob West, just to name a few, will be over at the AFA Retreat in April 2024. afaretreat.net, afaretreat.net is that URL. Well, uh, jumping into uh, a few clips that I want to get to this first segment. So there's this battle for the speakership in Congress This that's going on right now. And, and look, we, we knew this was coming because if you paid attention to the deal that was struck in January to allow Kevin McCarthy to attain the speakership, there were very strict conditions. There were very strict conditions um, and conservative concessions that permitted, that allowed uh, Kevin McCarthy to get the votes for the speakership. And, uh, and Kevin McCarthy largely has not been keeping his word on those, uh, on those promises that were made back in at the beginning of the year when he became House Speaker. And for those of us who've been tracking this in Washington for several years, we're not surprised that the House Speaker didn't keep his word. I mean, this is par for the course in Washington, D.C. And one gentleman had just enough frustration and outrage that he said, I'm done with it. We are done operating with such dysfunction Kevin McCarthy has to go. So that's Representative Matt Gates. And look, I'll just tell you up front, I don't know Matt Gates. I don't know his ego. I don't know his personality. I don't know his intentions here. But I can tell you one thing. He's right on the facts. And that's what I care about. He's right on the facts. And that's what we're going to highlight this segment. I'm going to play a clip three here in just a second. But this is going to set up the frustration that lawmakers have with Kevin McCarthy, right? Th th there were many promises made, including single subject spending bills called appropriation bills in order to correct, correct this whole continuing resolution and, and last minute, you know, uh, budgets that are forced through at midnight, you know, before they go home for recess. So let's play clip three. This is Matt Gates. It is astonishing to hear any colleague give Speaker McCarthy credit for moving on to the single subject appropriations bills. As you heard my colleague, Mr. Biggs say, that was never the plan from Speaker McCarthy. The week before we moved on to those single subject appropriations bills, the plan was another CR. He pitched a CR. They tried to get us to vote for a CR. And only when a brave few said, we are done governing by continuing resolution. We are here to eulogize the era of continuing resolution. We will not do it. We will not pass it. These bills can go. The spending may rise and fall as the years pass. But the notion that we're going to lump in the Department of Education and the Department of Labor with our military and our troops and our border patrol is fundamentally unserious and I would suggest chaotic. We cannot do that. It was only because we forced that to happen. And by the way, if we continue with Speaker McCarthy, the appropriations process will go right back to what he wanted it to go back to. Just a sideshow, just a puppet show, just something to keep the hamsters on the hamster wheel as they continue to back people up against a calendar 
centralized power with the lobbyists and special interests that move all kind of money through the leadership, and then that's how they get their way. Well, there you have it. That's uh, Matt Gates on the uh, on the floor of uh, the House speaking, and he's right. Look, the, w one of the main points of, 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 of dysfunction and brokenness is how we're doing our budgets. And all the left-wing agenda of Biden is being funded through these budgets. So, so to act as if the way Washington funds the, the government is, is the, to act as if that's inconsequential or it doesn't really matter, or if we do a continuing resolution or an omnibus or appropriations, oh, it just doesn't really matter, Walker, as long as we're funding the government. That's completely not true because what happens is what the, the congressman just said there. What happens is they fund all the Marxist left-wing propaganda in these budgets. They bundle it all into one budget, and then they say vote for it or not. Either fund our military or don't. Fund the border patrol or don't. Fund Ukraine or don't, even though that's a bad, <laughs> we probably shouldn't be funding Ukraine. But they put it all into one bill, and if, if you vote against it, then you're against our military, you're against our vets, and you're against uh, Medicare and Social Security. I mean, this is how this works. It's it's dysfunctional. And then, then Representative Gates went on, and he explained that instead of being all you know, caught up and, and flustered about having to vote on a new speaker. Why are we as a country and a Congress not flustered and frustrated about $33 trillion in debt? By the way, our debt's going up in the, to the tunes of hundreds of billions in a matter of days and weeks now because of interest. It's absolutely absurd. But let's listen to this last clip uh, for this segment. I want to go to uh, Representative Gates one more time, clip two. Mr. Speaker, my friend from Oklahoma says that my colleagues and I who don't support Kevin McCarthy would plunge the house and the country into chaos. Chaos is Speaker McCarthy. Chaos is somebody who we cannot trust with their word. The one thing that the White House, House Democrats, and many of us on the conservative side of the Republican caucus would argue is that the thing we have in common Kevin McCarthy said something to all of us at one point or another that he didn't really mean and never intended to live up to. I don't think voting against Kevin McCarthy is chaos. I think $33 trillion in debt is chaos. I think that facing a $2.2 trillion annual deficit is chaos. I think that not passing single subject spending bills is chaos. I think the fact that we have been governed in this country since the mid 90s by continuing resolution and omnibus is chaos. And the way to liberate ourselves from that is a series of reforms to this body that I would hope would outlast Speaker McCarthy's time here, would outlast my time here, and would outlast either of our majorities. Reforms that I have heard some of the most conservative members of this body fight for, and some of the reforms that we've been battling for that I've even heard those in the Democrat caucus say would be worthy and helpful to the House, like open amendments, like understanding what the budget is. We have been out of compliance with budget laws for most of my life, most of many of your lives. And by the way, if we did those things, if we had single subject bills, if we had an understanding on the top line, if we had open amendments, if we had trust and honesty and understanding, there would be times when my conservative colleagues and I would lose, might be a few times when we'd win. There'd be times that we would form partnerships that might otherwise not be uh, really predictable in the American body politic, but the American people would see us legislating. These last few days, we've suspended the momentum that we had established the week earlier, where we were bringing bills to the floor, voting on them, staying late at night, working hard. That's what the American people expect. It's something Speaker McCarthy hasn't delivered, and that's why I've moved to vacate the chair. Well, there you have it. So, so tell me where the other Republicans are that are arguing against what Representative Gates is saying there. And he's exactly right. Look, this is this is ridiculous. I mean, we're, we're our baseline for discussion and expectations is a losing position. We act as if we've always got to have a continuing resolution. We've always got to give Biden everything he wants. Do you remember how hard the Democrats fought Trump? Remember that? Remember how hard the Democrats fought Trump? And here we are, and they just finally got a subpoena issued against Hunter Biden just like two weeks ago, and we've had the majority, Republicans have had the majority 
for this entire year. We're almost in the end of the year, the calendar year, and we're just now getting subpoenas out against the Biden corrupt family. And, and, and Gates had, that was like pulling teeth to get Jim Jordan and Representative Comer to issue a subpoena. This is absurd. And the traditional Freedom Caucus is no longer the Freedom Caucus, and that's very sad to say. Because many of us know them, but they're weak. And the reason I know they're weak is because Jim Jordan teamed up with Kevin McCarthy to, uh, to, to, get, his, to get the speakership. And Jim Jordan said, oh, no, no, we're not going to, uh, we're not, we're not, I'm not going to go against uh, Kevin McCarthy. We're just going to do whatever Kevin McCarthy says. And then Jim Jordan's running this weaponization committee and not issuing subpoenas against the Biden family. So this is absolutely absurd. And we've got to raise our expectations here. And we've got to fight as hard as the Democrats fight. And that's the lesson here. So, no, I'm not frustrated at Matt Gates. I'm actually applauding Matt Gates. This is refreshing. Let's have the discussion. Kevin McCarthy has been a swamp creature from day one. We've known this. That's like acting as if we didn't think Paul Ryan was a swamp creature during Trump, President Trump's first few years in office. We knew he was. We knew he was. And you know what MAGA ought to be frustrated about?